1953 at the Carlisle Hospital, the military hospital at that time. My uncle was a policeman who in Carlisle, and the day I was supposed to be born, there was supposed to be a really bad storm coming, and he didn't want my mom having me in the house, so he took her over to Carlisle, and then he took me to the military hospital because my dad was in the room. And I, that's true, because when I was moving, they had, I had a trunk that was my great-grandfather's, and there was a newspaper article in there about the storm that hit the very day I was born. We played what was called sardines. Now, this is after we lived in town. When we lived out of town, out on the Buffalo when I was a kid, we did whatever we wanted. To. I mean, we weren't bad kids. We did whatever we wanted outside. But when we moved into town, we played this game called sardines. And that is where everybody would count but one person, and they would get a hide. And then whenever somebody come past, you'd grab them in until they were all grabbed in and pull us all. And we played mumbly pill, but you probably shouldn't say that, because that's with a knife. But my mom knew we were doing it. We did it in the backyard. It's not like we were throwing it at each other or anything. <laughs> we just played the typical kids' games, basketball hoops and hot scotch, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I was allowed to come in and spend a night with my girlfriend that lived up on 4th Street. We had a sleepover, and we went to the movies. That was the very first movie I saw. I was a little kid in the Buffalo. The first time I went down here, I saw Flipper. You could get sodas down here where it used to be Wellfleet's Pharmacy. They used to have a soda stand in there, and we'd go in there for malts and stuff like that. Our family ate dinner every day together at supper time, and we always had to have a hot breakfast before we went to school. But my dad was already gone, so the, the family meal was at supper time. And on Sundays, we went to my grandmother's. And every Sunday after church, it would be the full course, seven course meal. <laughs> she had like chicken, potatoes, pea, you know, the whole bit of desserts. And I can remember her making bread on Saturdays and pies for the week. Everything was, she, every day of the week, she had something different to do. Like laundry was Mondays and baking was Saturdays and cleaning. Oh yeah, we weren't allowed to leave the house till the house was clean. You didn't go out. You know, you didn't. You didn't have to do your homework when you first came home from school, but it had to be done before supper time. Because mom always thought you had to go out and play a little bit. <laughs> you know, because you're sitting all day long. And in the winter, when there was a lot of snow, I lived out Little Buffalo, where the original Clay's Bridge used to be. We used to ride the back of tractors to get to town when the snow was too high. And they would bring us into town to school. We didn't have days off in school. <laughs> we were pulled in a wagon whenever we came into town when the snow was too high. Was a snow I'm assuming it had snow piles, and I don't remember. But um, when they couldn't get our road open, we came in on, on the back of tractors. And we rode in a wagon in the back. And I loved walking through the square at Christmas time. Everything was decorated. All I could think of is that song, Silver Bells. But see, they don't do that anymore. And I wish they would bring that back, because I love that. They used to decorate every window the whole way around the square. they play Christmas music, which they do play. The one church plays carols in the evenings, but this was like music all the time. And when you're walking through the square and it's so beautiful and the snow's falling, you just can't feel anything but be happy for what you have. I think basically most of the people are still as friendly. The newer generations that are moving are kind of a little bit different. I mean, and that's just the way they were brought up. But I think basically most of the people still have the good personalities, you know, they'll help you. My neighbors, especially where I live, I live up on 6th Street, they'll help you carry stuff into your house or, you know, anything you need. I have people who cut my grass. I don't even know who does it. They're just, they're just wonderful people. I have wonderful neighbors. It's a good town to live in. Like I said, everybody's so friendly and everybody helped everybody when I was a kid. I mean, Dave Myers knew everybody in this town. Because he would see me and he'd say, oh, you're Anna's granddaughter. Like, yeah, I'm Anna's granddaughter. <laughs> How do you know Anna? <laughs> I 
I answered the telephones. It was a catalog order store. And I answered the phones. And I had this call one day, and this guy told me he wanted a post hole. We don't sell post holes. And back then is when they were selling or advertising Sue sells everything. And he got really irate with me. He said, what do you mean you don't sell post holes? He said, that's false advertisement. I said, well, sir, we have post hole diggers. And I looked it up and I told him what page. He said, no, I want a post hole. And here was the boss's brother giving me a hard time. <laughs> so at Christmas time, I took a, a sand bucket and put a hole in it and wrapped it up in my hand for Christmas and his wife said he kept it in the garage for the longest time but he's passed away now well he owned the J.C. Penney's too because when we had the flood I can remember cleaning out his shoes so nothing got oh it was miserable miserable when we had that flood and I babysat when I was in high school all the teachers kids I swear the little brats <laughs> trying to get her major in English the one teacher I'm not going to say her name and her kids were just perfect little angels. When she, as soon as they'd go, they'd start, she'd leave and shut that door, they'd start bawling. <sighs> and then we had another teacher I babysat for out here on 4th Street. And my mom and dad always said she could only babysit if you make sure she gets home at night. Then we lived on 6th Street and we went out in the And he'd stand down on 4th Street and watch me walk up to 6th until I disappeared. That's how he made sure I got home. <laughs>